presentation, I guess. So we're going to go through, and this is information that's been uh, our updates, I should say, within the message center that's happened uh, since uh, December, since our last meeting. Um, not a lot of big things, some updates happening, but I think there's some really good tidbits in here I think you're going to enjoy. So get started here. So the first thing we're going to start in the Microsoft 365 apps side of things. Um, so there's going to be a change on the home page or actually the my feed section of the as you go into Microsoft 365 home area. This is going to be around mid January, mid February for targeted release and then standard you'll get that here in February to March. But basically what it is is that you can access this my feed or Microsoft feed piece. Uh, from the left hand navigation when you go into Microsoft 365 and it's going to be a little it's going to show more relevant information for the individual user. Now I'm going to caveat this and it's actually one of my last notes. This is based off of users permissions and I think that's one of the things especially from a Microsoft 365 side of things. It's always been kind of like oh am I seeing things I'm not supposed to. It's always based off of permissions so making sure that you let your stakeholders know this, making sure your end users know this. If they if they have permissions for it, obviously there's some cleanup that has to happen and they should shouldn't be seeing it. But just so you know, that's what's going on there. But it is individually tailored to each person and what they're working on, the people that they're working on and making those connections across the board. All right. Next, again, in the Microsoft Suite set of things, now we're talking about the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And uh, they're adjusting and sh making it easier to be able to find the advanced deployment guides that are available. And it's out now, guys. So if you go in and you can search for tools, recommendations, layout, but the advanced deployment guides are found on the home page. You can click on that and go in there unless you've modified that and got rid of it. They've also made it easier to be able to just start the process of finding something. Hey, I want to be able to do Teams deployment. Um, and there's a lot more resources as well as you have the ability to be able to take whatever that plan happens to be and send it out to your stakeholders via Excel if you need to do that. You're including things like secure score, compliance score and adoption score information. Um, and the guides are really going to be a lot easier to be able to use. So. Another thing to keep in mind, another 365 suite um, side of things. Now, this is going to be in the message center. You know, what I'm dealing with daily uh, as I'm doing these meetings, they're adding a feature. And this is going to be coming out here, targeted release, mid ending in mid January. So, for some of you, you're going to get it sooner than later. Um, standard release April to May. And what this is, is they're adding another field in here and it's status for your organization, All right? It's gonna take a look at things like what you have deployed within your organization and when this is rolling out. So you, ha I know, I mean, I'm like, thank you. I think this is something that a lot of people have been looking for, right? So the, the, the options are gonna be scheduled, right? It's planned, not available quite yet, then it's rolling out, which means some people within your organization may already start to see it and others not yet. Um, and then it's launched. That means everybody within your organization that have the services, you know, the licensing associated to it will get it, right? Um, now, the one thing that they did mention in the message center post was that it's all based off the information you see in the Microsoft 365 public roadmap. If it's not in there, you're not going to see these things in there. So keep that in mind. But make sure you let your admins know about this change coming up because it's important then that way, whoever is in the message center will understand what's going on with this change. All right, let's jump to Viva. Um, another thing that's coming up here early January to late January, so it's starting to roll out right now. It's something called meeting prep inline suggestions. This is coming to Outlook with Viva Insights. So the important thing is there has to be a Viva Insights subscription associated to that user. And so what you'll see is, excuse me, when an email comes in and you're going to, you know, maybe it's it's setting up that meeting or um, looking at like how, uh, you know, you say, yes, I want to have this meeting. Let's get it in there. It's going to come back and say, hey, I see that you have a meeting, but do you want to be able to set up some prep time to get ready for that meeting? Right. So blocking your schedule so that you can take some time ahead of time 
before that meeting happens to get sh make sure everything is done right before that right and it could be just yourself or it could be other people so it gives you that option that you can book some time 15 minutes ahead 30 minutes ahead hour when do you want to do this right and then when you get that done you'll actually have this this viva insights panel will actually display number one what did I set up, right? When's this uh, prep meeting coming, right? All that information. After the fact, then you're going to get other meeting insights information, right? What was shared within that uh, within that meeting? Who attended? How long? Those types of things. You'll actually get some of that information within the Viva panel. So really great changes happening. Again, have to have Viva Insights subscription. Make sure you notify those users of this change. It's a great productivity feature that I think they'll uh, enjoy. From a whiteboard perspective, and this is something I literally, I think it was on a white uh, on a meeting last week, and I just saw this, so it's pretty relevant. Um, coming here, it started in December, going in here, it should be coming out here pretty shortly, but this is a whiteboard attribution feature. And what you'll start seeing is things like when you put on a sticky note, as you see the example on there, you'll actually see the person who created the sticky note and then you'll also see the person who last wrote on that sticky note or who did made a modification to that sticky note. So you know that, you know, who's been actually editing it. So it's a little bit easier for a collaboration and understanding who's doing one thing or another. Um, keep in mind, there are some policies that you can use to be able to um, turn that feature off. Um, it's available in web, Teams app, Windows app, mobile, tablets, Surface Hub and MTR experience, so across the board. And of course, let people know about that one. All right, so some interesting things on the team side of things. I'm not sure if you if you uh, like this or some of the things. There's some really good, interesting things happening from a filter perspective. So in this particular one, which is public preview here late in 2023 and then coming out for standard and GCC early February to late April. What's going to happen is, is that there's going to be an added feature where you can go into either in the pre-join or in meeting scenarios where you can add video effects. So you're going to get a video effects of a button and it's going to include things like frames and styles and something called Maybelline. <laughs> and I did play with that a little bit with a, a friend of mine and and I don't look good with eyelashes or mascara. That's all <laughs> I I'm bet you say. do, Don. Oh, I <laughs> oh, bet you yeah, do. Okay. I, very I funny. played with it too. <laughs> it was interesting. It's hilarious. But I do like things like the frames because it actually gives you like something in front. So, uh, for instance, it could be like a Christmas theme or something like that that you could then be festive, right? But it's in front of you, and then you could also use a background if you wanted along with that. But these video filters can be enabled and disabled um, from the Teams Admin Center, um, but make sure you let your, your users know that this is happening and some of the changes along with it. But um, it's pretty interesting to some of the things that are coming out from that. All right, uh, flyout enhancement. This is just one little thing that your end users may be like, huh, what's just happening here? Um, Mid-February to late February, this is coming out. It's called a flyout enhancement. So basically, when you're going and looking at apps, you're going to get and you click on the app option to be able to add more. You normally get the search box, but you're going to get a lot more information. For instance, you know, newly added apps that are now available or things that I normally have. Um, so you're going to get and be able to discover these apps a little bit easier. Um, plus, in the fact, in the past, when I did search, a lot of times it only searched those that are to install. Like if I go into the bottom image down here and I click on the search box and go in here, this would be those things are installed that are I have what's going on. It's actually going to make it easier for you to see more and be able to go right into the store if that is something you need to have happen. So again, uh, change notification, let people know that this is happening. Um, and it's available again, starting mid-February to late February. Another thing that I think you're gonna enjoy, um, I've been playing around with this a little bit, especially when you're presenting a desktop or presenting a window or an app. This is um, the presenter window improvements and screen sharing. What you're gonna see is you're gonna get things like the, um, 
like the controls are going to be sitting right here and you're going to see things like if somebody raises their hand, you will see that within this little screen that's going to be movable, right? You can expand it if you want to, but it just makes life a little bit easier, especially when you're presenting. Um, this is happening preview uh, early January to mid January production GCC early February to late February and GCC H and DOD then late February to mid March right again this is a, a one of those things you want to make sure you let you know end users know that this change is going to be happening now I'm going to talk more about this but this is coming out in my section which is the team's premium side of things because this is a premium feature Virtual appointment as a new Teams meeting template. Late February, early February, going to late February. And I get, again, I'm going to put a little bit more information as far as what's going on with this. But think of this as like bookings on steroids, right? If we talked about bookings before, you knew that that some of the, um, <coughs> excuse me, some of the um, capability is being able to book and set up a meeting very easily through that. This adds more complexity to it. So it gives you the ability to be able to do things like SMS. It gives you other capabilities so that you can have literally a virtual appointment with somebody. And I think, you know, small, you know, medical or, or should say healthcare areas, uh, or even if that's what you do is you do those types of meetings, right? And you just have, it could be a financial organization, things like that. So that way you have these encapsulated inside teams. We'll dive into this a little bit more, but this is coming out early February to late February, and it does require teams premium license to be able to have, have this happen. All right, some quick mentions, some things that I think you guys should uh, think about. Um, at mention everyone, okay? At mention everyone is a feature where within your group chat, you can say at everyone and then it will literally ping just like if I was pinging you know Michelle and I say hey at Michelle you should know about this well hey everybody you should know about this right in teams channels we do that by calling out the channel or the team but in a group chat we can't do that right so hey everybody attention to that this is coming right late January for desktop late February for iOS and Android um External SharePoint file request in, in SharePoint document library, which is happening late January to early February. I think this is an interesting one that you can then create a file request link. So say for instance, you're having a meeting with somebody outside of your organization and you say, I need some files from you, right? Could be part of a project or whatever you're doing. And you send them a project or a, 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 a so a folder, basically a folder link request. Hey, I want you to upload it here. All I get is they just can upload it into that. Okay, They don't need access to OneDrive. They're external. They can upload it. They can save it to that folder. They can't delete it from that folder. It's just an upload location. That's coming out here fairly shortly, uh, late January to early February. Um, some analytics things happening on the video stream video analytics side of things that you're going to get more information from a 730 and 90 day perspective as who's looking at those videos. Um, expansion of the video cards, uh, or I should say of the profile cards happening here February and, and April. What we see in Outlook is coming to Teams. Great. Finally, we needed that. Um, rich text capabilities within planner notes so that I can be able to bold, italicize, add more things as well as imaging is going to be coming here later on. Um, some uh, updates for administrators. Make sure you understand there's some updates to sway PowerShell commands so that you can move a sway from one person to another, which is going to be important. Um, and then uh, relevance recommendations are being released for um, Actually, that's yeah, standard release January to April message post relevance that should be happening for some of you already, but make sure you keep that in mind. Then from an updated side of things, we had not that many uh, um, things that were updating. These are things that got pushed back, right? Because of one thing or another. A couple of them that I wanted to call out. Things like suggested replies got pushed back. Um, a little bit for GCC high and DOD. And that one is where you, uh, when you're having, you know, you got called out, 
like in a maybe Michelle called my name out and it would have little suggestions in there saying, hey, you could just say, oh, thank you. Right. And then you click on that and it sends that out. Those types of things. Um, Sharing experience drop down is is getting pushed back a little bit, as well as um, custom org sign in and sign up pages did get pushed back to late February, late March. Um, on that, and that's when after you put in your email, it'll know, hey, I'm at contoso.com, and it'll take you to the custom branded contoso.com page um, that you're able to then be able to see that and put in your pot, and you know that you're in the right location. That's really a big part part of that. All right, and then some admin actions. I'm just going to call out the two new ones that we have. This one here about Power Automate automated emails, right? So you will, when you have an email that comes to your inbox, it will be coming from a specific uh, domain, right? That domain is changing. And you'll notice in this particular, this is actually calls out where they're at and where they're coming from. So make sure that you get your IP addresses and safe sender list all updated with those so that those don't get blocked beforehand. And then the other one is retiring of the Teams mobile support for iOS 14. And so we're not going to be supporting that, so you're not going to be able to have the Teams mobile app. If you are on anything or at 14, you need to be something running something newer. So your end users may have some issues if that's the case. All right, I think that's everything.